The Xbox brand as a whole has had a interesting history with accessories. Some were pretty useful, but then there were some accessories that really just made you wonder what what's going on? Why is is this still a thing? So today on Rocket Soft, we decided to take a look back at some of the worst and most useless Xbox accessories of all time. Let's get into it. First up, we have the absolutely amazing Xbox HD DVD player. For people who don't remember, HD DVDs were supposed to be the new HD successor to that of the DVD. You know, remember when everyone had VHSs? and then jump to DVDs, and it was kind of this huge market boom for DVD players to sell. Well, Microsoft decided that they needed to capitalize on what they hoped would be another surge of sales like that, but they decided to take the side of the HD DVD instead of a Blu-ray player, and it's pretty clear they, uh, they picked the wrong side. Since by 2008, it was pretty clear that the Blu-ray market was the one that was dominating, and HD DVD was pretty much abandoned by everyone. It makes sense why Microsoft tried to go with HD DVD because Blu-ray was made by Sony. How is the compression uh, uh, superior in HD DVD than Blu-ray? Blu-ray is old technology already. The compression that they use is old technology. It's 10 years old. But I think most likely a lot of people just didn't see the difference between HD DVD and regular DVD. So Blu-ray sounded like the next cool thing. But hey, you were able to buy classic Oscar worthy masterpieces like The Nutty Professor 2, The Clumps, exclusively on HD DVD. I don't know how they lost the DVD Blu-ray war. Next, we're looking at the Xbox Connect, which was an interesting concept. It really was a cool concept, but I mean, wasn't it pretty much just a fancy version of the iToy from the PlayStation 2 days? Let's be honest. Honestly, this accessory wouldn't have been as bad or ranked on this list had Microsoft not hyped this up like this was the biggest revolution in gaming. And they spent so much money on marketing the Xbox Connect, and honestly, there's pretty much just a bunch of subpar games that went into it. I mean, Connect Adventures was okay for a little bit. Did anyone play Sonic Freeriders? That was garbage. But it's okay, they obviously learned their lesson with the Connect because they never did anything with it again, other than force people to buy it with their Xbox Ones at launch. And no one used it even then. But even better than the Connect, we had the brilliant Connect Game Boat. This is like a really tame and garbage version of that kick-ass skateboard that came with Tony Hawk's ride. Does anyone remember that? Which itself, it didn't work. But hey, at least it was cool because skateboarding was so cool at the time. But uh, with this thing, <laughs> I really just want to know what they were thinking. I, I, I don't know much to say about this or what the purpose of this is. I guess you can have a inflatable gaming raft in your living room. I find this kind of a, the equivalent of when they added like little mini tennis rackets or golf clubs that you used to be able to put your Wii motes in for like Wii sports, except they decide just to take it like a mile further and way too far. Next, do you guys remember the original controller that came with the first Xbox back in the day? And while it wasn't like the worst thing that was ever released, back then there was no alternative. This is just what you got when you got your Xbox, and it was a, a, a pretty fat controller. I know some people still really like this controller, so I'll give you that, but at the time there was no alternative, and since Xbox was intended to be for all ages, the controller was so big, like, little kids couldn't even reach the buttons as well. But we will give Microsoft credit, because over the years they got so much better at making controllers, and they really refined the design of the Xbox controller, and the 360 controllers, and especially the Xbox One controllers. They still feel really good today. But man, that first fat Xbox controller, it was like they were trying to reinvent the traditional twin joystick controller, but instead of inventing anything cool, they just made it a giant piece of plastic. They've must have realized that since they released an updated version just a year after the Xbox's original launch, which was actually the controller that was developed for the Japanese market designed for users with smaller hands. But hey, at least they used it to learn. And then they did that retro version of the controller, which I mean is kind of cool, but I mean, let's be real, it's, it's a little excessive. Next up we have the official Xbox 360 face 
plates? Yeah, they launched with the Xbox 360 in 2005, and it kind of was an attempt to copy phone cases by being able to make your Xbox unique to fit your own personality. But you don't take your Xbox with you every time you leave the house, and honestly, your Xbox is just stationary for a majority of its life, so there's no real reason to have to personalize the way that it looks. But even then, even if you really did want to get a unique faceplate and you wanted to just show off how dank it was, most of them looked really funky since the color of the base console never matched up to the color of the faceplate. So they uh, stopped producing those because sales were pretty poor on them. Now if we go back to the early days of the original Xbox, there was a pretty big rise of competitive online games like Halo 2 and there was a demand for good communication devices because people needed to communicate to win their games. The speaker comm tried to fill that gap. It was a microphone speaker attachment that you plug into the top of your Xbox controller and if you wanted to talk you had to press and hold a button on the device meaning taking your hand off the controller which means you'd have to basically handicap yourself just to communicate with your teammate. The speaker comm also did not allow you to talk and listen at the same time which made it a walkie talkie which is literally just like the worst concept you can possibly come up with for any type of competitive communication in a video game and the sound quality was Garbo. Almost as bad as my microphone recordings before Luke edits my sound to make it sound better. But when the Xbox 360 rolled around, there was also a device called the Game DR Smack Talk or Game Doctor Smack Talk. But I guess if you thought smack talking and talking trash on games was a crucial feature of the Xbox Live experience, this device lets you actually upload your own sound bites all right into your controller and you could play it right through your microphone so you could uh, really just annoy people. That was the whole purpose of this. Uh, I don't know why this is on the list of awful devices uh, or accessories because this sounds like the best thing ever because who doesn't want to just sit in a game and listen to you blast your crappy 2008 music on Xbox Live. But even cooler than just microphones or connect inflatable boats or HD DVD players. In 2002, there was a Steel Battalion mech controller that was released and bundled with the Xbox game Steel Battalion and was an attempt to make an immersive experience at being a mech pilot. The thing wasn't that badly designed and worked well with the game, but it was too heavy, too large, and parts didn't feel natural to play with. Essentially, its biggest flaw was that it was $200 and only ever worked with two games, Steel Battalion and its sequel. There was a third game in the series called Steel Battalion Heavy Armor that used the Kinect, and of course that was a flop because the controls were uh, Kinect controls, so terrible. Nonetheless, there is still a small fan base playing this game on that controller to this day, and I applaud their dedication to getting their money's worth out of their overpriced purchase. And lastly, we can't forget the most important thing on this list possibly for accessories that obviously was not a waste of money or a quick cash grab whatsoever. Back in the glory days of Xbox when Modern Warfare 2 was literally how you defined your worth as a human being, some companies actually sold stick on red dots for Call of Duty and other shooters. Yeah, essentially it was a, a sticker that you put in the middle of your screen and you can, uh, I guess, hip fire your gun a little bit better if you're slow to aim. I mean, even back then, most first person shooters had recoil built into the gun and the guns didn't shoot in a straight line unless you're maybe sniping and Halo 3, so this was a really weird, a really weird sale, but apparently people bought it thinking that it would make them better Call of Duty players and better first person shooter players when really you're paying like $30 just to have a sticker put on the middle of your screen. It was a, it was a very weird investment, but I remember people, people buying this. But yeah, those are pretty much the worst and most useless accessories that have come out on the Xbox over the years. But yeah, did you have any of these accessories or did you ever consider buying any of these accessories back in the day? Let us know in the comment section down below what you think. If you guys like this channel, we do a ton of coverage on the Xbox 360 and just kind of the good old days of the Xbox and the memes and the 
useless accessories from back in the day. So if you like anything in that realm or anything like that, be sure to subscribe because we got you covered. You're never going to miss anything ever again unless YouTube doesn't send it out and that's neat. So we'll see you guys all next time with a brand new video.